Siskel and Ebert review Bob Hoskins as a private eye hired to find out who framed Roger Rabbit. Boy, what is this? Some kind of a secret room? It's a rot gut room. Hold over from Prohibition. Oh, I get it. A speakeasy. A gym mill. A hooch parlor. Tools are up here, Eddie. Look at this. Ah! It's a spy hole. Jim is Eddie. This will be a great place to hide. Bob Hoskins tries to solve two murders while coping with a cartoon character in the ambitious new film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's one of the new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert. I'm Gene Sisko of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is one of those home runs that Hollywood hits every once in a while. It's a movie like 2001 or Close Encounters or especially like E.T. that's a technical breakthrough and a lot of fun both at the same time. This movie is great entertainment from one end to the other, but it's also one of those films where you're always asking yourself, how did they do that? The movie takes place in Hollywood in 1947, where it assumes the cartoon characters and human beings were living side by side and working in the movies. It tells the story of a cartoon star named Roger Rabbit, who gets framed for a murder and has only one chance of being cleared, a private eye named Eddie Valiant, played by Bob Hoskins. Did you get in here? Through the mail slot. I thought it would be best if I waited inside. See if I'm wanted for murder. No kidding. Just now, notice there how realistically the animation is combined with the real world. It looks like Roger Rabbit is really there in the human universe. And look at the way here that real water and a cartoon rabbit interact in this scene as the bad guys come looking for Roger and Hoskins hides him. Okay, wise guy. Where's the rabbit? I haven't seen him. What's in there? My lingerie. See, Ryan. Roger Rabbit has a sexy wife named Jessica who is briefly suspected of trying to frame him. She's a singer who performs at the famous Ink and Paint Club. Listen to her voice here. It was dubbed by Kathleen Turner. I'd do anything for my husband, Mr. Valiant. Anything. The cartoon characters are named Toons in this movie, and one of the things that makes them different from humans is that their lives are governed by the cliches of animated cartoons. That explains how and why Roger can get out of those handcuffs. Does this help? Yeah, thanks. Do you mean to tell me that you could have taken your hand out of that cuff at any time? No, not at any time. Only when it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Eddie, raise your sense of humor. He always is funny or only on days when he's wanted for murder. And it's amazing there how they really seem to exist in the same physical universe. In previous movies, you might have a little cartoon character dancing on somebody's shoulder, but they never really seem to really be there. There have been a lot of previous movies where animation was combined with live action. For example, Song of the South with Br'er Fox interacting with Uncle Remus or Mary Poppins, but it's never been done anywhere near this well before. What I want to do now is look at this scene coming up now from the movie and pay special attention to what the filmmakers are doing and how. amazing there where she seems to actually be touching his cheeks this is jessica in a nightclub scene and now watch how she's all over bob hoskins here that's amy irving's singing voice look her hand goes under the coat the coat goes back the hat leaves now it's pushed in his face the way they did this was to have all of the props operated by hidden wires or by hidden operators so that later on when the animation comes in the props would move just as if the animated characters were moving them the hard part for Hoskins, look at him there, he really seems to be looking at her, and he had to act through this whole movie all by himself. He had to imagine that there was a girl there. He does a great job, and then look, his tie pulls out and is dropped again. It's just amazing the way those cartoon characters are integrated with the real thing. It's terrifically well done, so well done that after a while you give up trying to figure things out and just go along with the story, which has some serious undertones as those tunes are treated like second-class citizens. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a co-production of the Disney and Spielberg companies, directed by Bob Zemeckis, who made Back to the Future, and the animation is by Richard Williams, who's Raggedy Ann and Andy we liked several years ago. 
One of the most impressive of their achievements here was to convince other Hollywood studios to loan out their cartoon stars. So we see not only Disney characters like Mickey Mouse, but Warner Brothers heroes like Bugs Bunny. I could hardly believe it when there was a piano duet starring the two great ducks, Donald and Daffy. This is a wonderful movie, one of the year's best oh, films. Oh, I think so, absolutely, mm -hmm. too. And again, the dominant reaction that I had, mouth agape, how did they do that? Now, one of the tricks that I learned that was very interesting, an improvement in t cartoon technology is, and even an improvement over the classic Disney cartoons like Snow White, which would animate every other frame, mm -hmm. so that it would, instead of 24 frames a second, uh, like you see a person on movies, mm -hmm. they did it 12 frames to save money, mm -hmm. and two frames are similar. Every single frame here is animated. Mm -hmm. They wanted the animation to look as bright and real. All 24 frames are animated, just like Bob Hoskins is running at 24 frames. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the film is brighter, more exciting than most cartoon things that we've ever seen, including the opening four or five minute cartoon, pure cartoon sequence that opens the movie that is so dazzling and yes, so funny oh, that's that I tell you, I am going back to that movie to see that the sequence opening, again. The opening sequence yes. of five minutes had me laughing louder I, than any cartoon I've ever seen. It was hysterical. And then you're quite right when you go through this film. They cast shadows. Yes. They seem to, the floorboards bend under their weight. Oh. When they uh, are in the dishwater, the water is moving. How they did it? is obviously they just worked and worked and worked. And one of the achievements that we really should point out, I think, is that Bob Hoskins was able to interact with an ima imagination. It's like Alec Guinness in the uh, Star Wars movie saying he had to spend all of his time in an empty room yeah. imagining spaceships there, which okay. it's really hard this to This is bigger like that. than that. Bob Hoskins mm -hmm. was picked, I'm told he was not the first choice, that they wanted to go after some comic actors, uh -huh. well-known comic actors, instead of Hoskins. I think they made the right choice going with Hoskins as counterpoint to the... Let, let Daffy Duck be funny. Yeah. You need uh -huh. an Iron Center, sort of a Sam Spade kind of character. Right. And Bob Hoskins, for my money, is the best guy to well, do it now. Well, he is matter of fact. If he right. were going around all the time saying, oh my God, look, yeah. this, is a, a, uh, this is Bugs Bunny here, uh, nobody would think that was funny. But the fact that he's seen these tunes all of his life and it's routine and he accepts them makes the movie seem more realistic. Here's the big question I have. Who is the film going to be more entertaining for, adults or kids? I know who I think. I think more for adults. You, I agree, absolutely. Yeah, yeah.